Well, I am so excited uh, to be with you all today uh, uh, to have Heidi, Dr. Heidi Hanna, a very, very dear friend, uh, to join us. And, and Heidi is extraordinary. Heidi is the Executive Director of the American Institute of Stress. And also, and I love this, she is the Chief Energy Officer of Synergy. And Heidi and I, uh, we've connected around our common passions around around stress and stress navigation. And, uh, and what I've been so inspired by and the purpose really of this interview is that Heidi has taken on something extraordinarily ambitious, which is to put together a uh, global stress summit where um, she's brought together some of the leading experts in the field to share about their experiences and their relationship with stress that really hopefully will serve you at a very, very high level in transforming your relationship with stress. So Heidi, I, um, I'm so delighted that you're on. I'm also so honored that you invited me to participate in sharing in the summit too. It just really was a joy to do that interview with you. And I, um, as you know, uh, for, for those of you that have um, also followed the work that I do, I have an incredible passion around stress, particularly in the way that it um, engages us in understanding how to lead at a higher level to in, engage that relationship. So Heidi, I, when I came across your work and everything you've done, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just uh, so appreciative of the contribution that you made to the field. And now with this stress summit, just taking it to, to a whole next level. So I wonder if you could share with all of us, uh, you know, first of all, your inspiration for putting the summit together and, uh, and why now, you know? Uh, uh. Yeah, well, uh, great questions. And it's an honor to be here. And thank you for uh, supporting my initiative with the Stress Summit for sure, but also just for being such a great friend and such a great leader. Um, for those of you who are watching, I had had many people along my journey as a speaker uh, saying, you need to connect with this Dr. Danny. Uh, he lives in, in your hometown. So it was like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But reading his book, Leading Well from Within, just was such a beautiful book. And I was really touched by your knowledge of stress and your recommendations. And I knew it was something I wanted to share um, with our community. So um, yeah, it, Ambitious is definitely, it's, I didn't think it was ambitious when I started off. Um, I knew it would be a bit of a challenge to get people to invest their time and energy in something like this. Um, but really, interestingly enough, the, the stress has come after the production. And I could probably do a whole conversation about <laughs> all the stress that's involved with putting on a stress summit. But I, I went into this and I said, I am determined not to let this stress me out because I want to live through this experience um, practicing what I preach. And I feel like uh, that's really something we need more of in the world today. I'm grateful that you're such a great example of that. Um, but I know that all of us, even with all of the information and knowledge, can get hijacked by the world that we live in because there's so much change happening so fast. There's so much uncertainty in our world right now. And really our experience, our relationship with stress is based on the lens through which we see the world. And when we see that we feel out of control or we don't have the resources we need to keep up, it, it literally hijacks our brain, it hijacks our attention, and it's really destructive. And that's actually what leads to all of these negative health consequences when we look at stress and the impact on 75 to 90% of medical visits. It's not stress in its true definition of a stimulus for change. It's stress in the sense of feeling overwhelmed, feeling out of control, feeling like we don't have enough or we aren't enough in who we are. And so I think that, you know, what the, the most difficult part about the world we live in today is we have access to so much information that sometimes it's hard to just slow down and get grounded and be intuitive about the things that we already know and really practice common sense. I always tell people if I've learned anything in 13 years of doing this, common sense is not common practice. Yeah. And even with myself, I'm, I'm really, really practicing to the best of my ability in those moments that I feel hijacked by the noise of the pressure of the overwhelm um, of even feeling like I haven't done enough or, you know, I'm not providing enough to just sit back in the pocket and, and realign myself with what matters most. And so 
to me, the summit uh, in some ways was a total game changer for me because I, as a stress expert, was experiencing a lot of stress and burnout and wanted to get a better grasp on it. And so I decided that if I could put together like a PhD in stress management, mm -hmm. I wanted to invite the people I would most want to learn from, regardless of their list, their social media reach, their you know promotion. It was like, this isn't a business. I want this to be a conversation and I want to change Right. The way we refer to stress so that it's not this out of control out there entity, but this dynamic interactive relationship with mindset and all of these other things that we know play a role. And so uh, fortunately, the people that I reached out to were very generous uh, with their time and their energy and the people I was able to have conversations with were people that I've really admired over the years and many of them who are spending their time and energy in the laboratory in clinical roles, really doing the research and now helping us to translate that into practical application, which, you know, is just such, such a joy. So we know that this is a summit and this is kind of this one-time experience, but I think this is a conversation that is evolving and going to continue through our work with the American Institute of Stress. Yeah. Well, Heidi, you know, what, what really inspires me about uh, what you've done is, first of all, you've brought together the science, you know, a, um, probably the most robust curriculum and, um, and group of individuals having a conversation um, at the same time, um, which is extraordinary. But I think, you know, just as importantly, um, what I admire in, in your work is the way that you model your relationship with stress. And for all of us, you know, I, I don't believe that there are any true gurus in stress where you somehow have arrived and it's the most, it's the most innate of human experiences. And so uh, this idea about that we're all in it, we're understanding the science, we're learning for better ways to engage around stress um, is, is so important. And, you know, what, what you've shared even modeling over here that you know for you putting the stress summit together was <laughs> was a stressful was a stressful experience so just in in terms of sharing um you know this 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 experience um about having a relationship with stress do you see also healthy aspects of stress in terms of ways that stress can be leveraged to become even more productive or engaged or thrive more fully in your life too yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm chuckling to myself a little bit because when I tell people I want to change the conversation about stress, their first go to is, oh, yeah, you're going to talk about why stress is good. And right. you know, we just need to embrace it and love yeah. it. And I'm yeah. like, well, not exactly. Yeah. Um, what I want to do is help people understand that good stress can become bad and bad stress can become good. And it yeah. truly is the lens through which we see the world. That's why the brain plays such an important role, yeah. because the brain is picking up these non unconscious cues in our environment to really let us know if we're safe or not. And based on that feeling, you know, the more we learn about the brain and the fact that it's gathering information from our, our state of being, that state is determining, you know, how we then pick up on what's happening in the world. And it's that state of being that I think we have so much control over through things that are common sense, that aren't common practice, like how we breathe, how we move, how we eat, how we sleep, how we focus our attention on things that are positive and uplifting and gratitude. And even one of my favorite, which is actually kind of a framework through which I, I did this whole uh, summit is curiosity, you know, asking yeah. the right question. Absolutely. And, and, you know, that's, I've shared with you, this is yeah. my new book that I'm working on is, is about this curiosity yeah. effect, because even in the most difficult, challenging times, I find that if we can ask the right questions, yeah. it just opens up possibility. Yeah. And that's not to ignore what's negative, what's challenging, what's frustrating, what's disappointing. I mean, I'll be honest, I've had more heartbreak during the summit yeah. than I have probably at any other other time in my life. And it's those sorts of things where I feel maybe let down or disappointed or frustrated that it's easy for me to throw in the towel because I'm very sensitive. Yes. Even today as I was running, because movement happens to be one of my biggest stress yeah. relievers, my mindset started to shift and I started thinking, you know, what if I could take what feels like it's against me 
and turn it into something that's for me. And I was thinking about the wind and how when we try to push it back, it just causes more, you know, more difficult, more frustration. But when we actually embrace it and we can shift our direction in that direction, I mean, it's just, it was this interesting framework for me to say, anytime now that I feel like I'm experiencing that maybe called stress, distress, is there another way that I can look at that? Because essentially when we go from, against to towards our brain just totally works differently you know Heidi I, I, I so connect with you on this and you know one of the things that I um, um, you know the core also of the work that I do coming from evidence-based medicine is the notion of no matter what you're facing can you answer can you ask a better question can you find the stillness to allow those answers to find you can you trust your knowing and can you take action in that I think what you're saying is so profound, which is that when we begin to ask a better question, first of all, it recruits an entirely different neural pathway. If you're thinking about problems, so in a way, you know, if you think about problems, there are some questions that are automatic negative thinking that we ask, which is, what's wrong with me? What, you know, uh, what's wrong with other people? Why don't they like me? Why, why do they, they like me? me? And, and those are, why is somebody calling the phone right now? <laughs> yeah, why right now? But even that, it's like, okay, so why right now, which is so funny. It's like, well, why wouldn't it be right now? Because they say, why? Exactly. So, we, 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 so, or, you know, what if and all the bad things that could happen or if only the regrets of our past. Yeah. But when we structure into, and those, a lot of those questions activate the survival circuitry, which really amplifies a degree of stress. But when we ask the questions of around, like, what is it that we get to learn? How can we better care for ourselves, mind, body, and spirit? How can we best express ourselves? What's our best service? It puts you into a whole, into a whole other um, way of thinking and energy, if you will. And so I think what you're saying, yeah, just in terms of changing your relationship with stress through curiosity. And, and actually, you know, I, I don't know if you've had this experience as well, that if you find yourself incredibly stressed, even if you just bring curiosity that's stressed, to see can you be truly stressed and curious at the same time? Something shifts. So I, lo I love what you're doing. I really... Uh... Yeah, and I'll just add to that. I mean, if there's one kind of simple takeaway, even if people don't go to the summit and you hear this conversation, here, here's my takeaway, and I feel like this is repeated over and over, is that the, the little quick three-step approach I take anytime I'm feeling stressed is assess, appreciate, adjust. Yeah. Assess, what's really going on? What am I really feeling? Stress is not really a feeling. Stress is an experience. Why am I experiencing that? Am I tired? Am I overwhelmed? Am I hungry? You know, what's... Have I, do I need to laugh? Like, what is it, you know, that, that's really going on? What do I need right now? And then appreciate that because so many of us skip from assess to adjust. Okay, what is it? Now let me fix it. And without changing our state, we don't change our lens. It's much harder to make right. those adjustments. And I think appreciation to what you're saying of just, you know, hey, I'm glad I have this stress response. I'm glad this is calling my attention to it. I'm glad I have an opportunity to learn something. I mean, any way you can nudge that positivity and it's realistic optimism. It's not, you know, pretending that there isn't stress and challenge and frustration. Then the adjustment just becomes, you know, what do we do different? Is it a curiosity mindset? Is it gratitude? Is it social support? Uh, acts of service? Is it literally a physical nudge that needs to happen like sound therapy or neurofeedback? There's so many techniques out there that will help us. But I think at the core, it's really about finding alignment. You know, who, who am I? What am I experiencing? What do I really need right now? And then what's kind of the, the simplest way for me to make an adjustment that's going allow me to have a better experience the more we practice those experiences the more our relationship with stress i think starts to really transform which is fantastic because you know, what you're talking about then is in this relationship there's an edge um, i think what i'm hearing you saying what what i what i resonate with is that when stress arises there's one you know there's a um, almost a reflex, reflex response that many of us have because that, that edge of stress can be uncomfortable. And so there's this temptation that you want to close the door on that stress and ignore it. Yeah. But the notion is, is that it's uncomfortable because something behind that door is something you really care about. Absolutely. And so the courage to open it, to lean in and ask the questions as you're asking over here in terms of what, what's really meaningful to me? Why am I feeling this way? How can I best respond? 
is a very, very powerful way to navigate through. Yeah, I would say two things. I love lean in for so many reasons because we're in a lean in culture right now, which is great. And I would say lean in and also from time to time lean back. Yeah. Right, so you're leaning in and looking into it, and then you're also giving yourself a break sometimes. Yes. Self compassion, nurturing, yeah. downtime. We just, our world is so busy and so connected, and it's very hard to say no because we live in a world that says say yes, say yes. yes. But we really also need to sometimes turn it off, turn down the noise, let ourselves reboot and recharge. Yeah. And I think, you know, hopefully throughout the summit, not only are people learning information, but we're going to be practicing it as well. And I even have a recharge toolkit that people are going to have access okay. to so that each day they'll have a meditation and some music and some humor and some strategies wow. to really practice yeah. as they're learning the information from the different experts. Awesome. And Heidi, I know, you, first of all, you've been incredibly generous with your time over here. And uh, uh, just in the, in the remaining moments we have, it, would you like to give just a, a high level overview in terms of how you thought about this landscape of stress? Certainly it touches so many areas of our life. And so for you to put the summit together, um, it was an ambitious undertaking because it, it, it touches so many areas of our life. So can you just share about how you've um, structured it you know, what your intention is with the key takeaways on each of the days. And yeah. so I did. So going back to kind of the way, the way I work, the way my brain works as a presenter and a writer and a, an educator was, you know, how do we turn this into a lesson? I don't want this just to be conversations. I want people to have a learning experience. And so in my mind, I built that uh, intentionally with starting off day one with the history and biology of stress, looking, I mean, pioneering experts, Dr. Herbert Benson, uh, Robert Sapolsky, Bruce McEwen, people in the lab doing the work, sharing that work with us. It's really powerful. Um, And then I started looking at on day two, the brain and mindset. On day three, the body and lifestyle, things like nutrition and fitness and sleep. Mm. On day four, we talk about workplace stress. It's something that a lot of people, you know, have challenges with work and, and being so busy and so connected. Day five, we talk about relationships from, you know, your, your spouse to your kids, to your relationship with yourself, to spirituality. Um, day six is special population. So looking at things like PTSD, ADD, um, stress sensitivity, and different aspects of how stress can actually become problematic. But also, interestingly enough, our session with Shelley Carson uh, from Harvard, where we talk about depression, we also talk about creativity. Turns Ah, out depression and creativity go hand in hand. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes, you know, seeing both sides of the spectrum there can be really helpful. And then on the last day, it's the practical tools. So we're really diving more into the details of things like humor, neurofeedback, sound therapy, music, um, how we communicate in a way that's Mm. uh, more positive. So the, the whole idea was to kind of build upon just literally as if I were to create a, you know, PhD course in stress Mm. and perhaps ironically one of the greatest things that's come out of this whole experience is that I actually have now been asked to teach a course and I won't say where uh, Mm. until it's officially official I'm very excited to be asked now to teach uh, several different opportunities on uh, the neuroscience and especially the applied neuroscience of stress. Mm, Phenomenal Heidi and Heidi you know you you've interviewed um, uh, many of the top thought leaders in this arena. Was there anything over the week uh, of interviews that you did that surprised you or you learned something radically new that changed your way that you now relate to stress? I'm going to say two things. Um, Number one is the conversation I had with Bart Billings, who's now become a very good friend of mine about combat stress and PTSD. Mm. Really eye-opening that PTSD is a normal response to an abnormal situation. Uh, That these individuals are trained for years to go into combat and days to come home. And that just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I think we really need to serve our service providers, not just in the military, but first responders. We need to do a better job, and I feel very passionate about that. Um, as far as kind of insights, I would say Stephen Porges's conversation mm-hmm. about rewiring neurological safety. Dr. Porges uh, came up with the polyvagal theory, yes. which you know kind of made sense. I kind of didn't really 
think that much about it until I had a conversation with him. And for me, it was, it was life changing mm. because of my own experience with vasovagal syncope. Mm. And most people have never heard of that. But what I've found in my speaking engagements is now, as I start sharing that with people, more and more people are familiar. Um, and it turns out that vagus response may be at the core of a lot of sensitivity issues, even like sensory processing, mm. autism, learning disabilities, all sorts of things. So just from a very fundamental understanding the stress response, why it's there and how it affects us, yeah. I think this conversation, um, very he's a very detailed uh, scientist and has a lot of great theories, but the conversation was really easy to follow, yeah. easy to apply, and I would encourage everybody to yeah. check and, it. And was there, was there a practical takeaway from that insight that you had about, you know, that somebody listening could apply in terms of or, or, or tease yeah. it, if you will yeah absolutely well it goes back to what i think i touched on just briefly which is the state of our being uh really determines the lens through which we see the world right. and so it is that energy that sometimes feels a little woo woo or out there uh really is that whether it's heartbeat uh breathing patterns you know when we're sensing that we're not safe right brain, adjust dramatically so yeah. how do you and so the easy take home for everyone is how do you feel safe for me it may sound crazy but like sitting in a warm water a hot tub a warm bath yes, uh, yes. heavy blankets listening to music what are the sensory things you can do to shift yeah. yourself to safety when you're feeling overwhelmed that's going to help your brain to think more uh, effectively to problem solve your way out of what's stressing you out yeah, well, Heidi, I I am so excited to um, uh, listen to the entire summit myself. You know, I just feel that um, the wealth of what you've assembled and the rich pearls you know, you know that you've shared is is so meaningful. And uh, in addition to contributing to um, every individual listening, um, you know, the powerful thing over here is when we begin to change our relationship with our own stress. What's also beautiful is we get to change our relationship with other people's stress as well. And we get to deepen our relationship to both with self and with others. And I think that's, that's so profound. And I, um, I really deeply appreciate the work that you do and, uh, and the time that you've taken with us. And so I hope that you're all very inspired to, to learn more and, uh, and to gain access to, um, to the summit. I, I really encourage you now to just click on the link below and sign up and it's free. So it's a, it, it's a very, very generous free offering bringing together the complete science, a PhD in stress, as Heidi said, um, to learn what I think is one of the most important relationships we have in our lives. Thank you, Heidi. Absolutely. Thank you.